Good evening, everyone. My name is Father Matt Brown, and I am uh, a priest of the Diocese of Rockville Center, currently assigned to St. Dominic's in Oyster Bay. Um, as I was walking in before, I saw some really familiar faces from uh, Long Beach and the Beach, Beach Catholic community. Um, I actually spent two summers down here with Father Brian uh, at St. Mary's when I was a seminarian. So I'm really grateful uh, for his invitation to come and to uh, just offer a reflection in the presence of our Lord this evening. Um, Father Brian, you guys are so blessed to have him as your pastor. I'm, I, don't, I don't need to, uh, to say it, but um, he's just one of the finest priests on Long Island, and you guys are just so, so blessed to have him. And he's inspired me in many ways, too. And actually, I asked Father Brian to vest me uh, when I became a priest just a year and a half ago. So it's uh, really great to be with you this evening and to be with him here in this beautiful place, but especially with our Lord. Um, at St. Dominic's, um, we are kind of unique. If you've ever been to Oyster Bay, it's a, it's a beautiful place. Um, and that parish is really a beautiful community, uh, the more and more I get to know them. But we're really unique in the sense that um, at our parish, we are one of two schools on Long Island uh, to have a, or two parishes on Long Island to have two schools. We actually offer pre-K to 12th grade there, grammar school and high school. Um, and one of my ministries at St. Dominic's, uh, while it's important for me to be present to the entire parish and to both schools, but in particular, one of my ministries is to be teaching senior theology. And I had my first set of classes this week, uh, back on Tuesday and then again today. I have about 80 seniors in my class, and I'll say it right now, my appreciation for teachers has grown exponentially over the last week. Um, just with all the preparation, the teaching, and the grading of even homework, uh, it's just a lot, and I just have so much respect for the teachers here. Um, but as any teacher would know, uh, teaching in a high school, teaching wherever you are, is such a rewarding experience, especially in a theology class when you get to speak about the Lord. The course I'm teaching is called Catholic Apologetics, um, which is literally meant to prepare seniors to live and to defend their faith as they go off to college. Um, we have this awesome textbook that, that we're going to be using for the course, but the only problem with that book is that it jumps right into the content. So like as I was preparing and reflecting on this course that I had to teach, I realized that theology should be something other than the mind. Yes, it needs to be the mind. School is the mind. But it also has to be an experience of the heart. And that's what faith is all about, mind and heart. Our relationship with the Lord needs to stimulate our minds in such a way that we want to know more about him. And our, our study of God should lead us back to our knees in prayer to grow in our relationship with him. So this, this bridge between the mind and the heart is super important. As I was preparing to teach this class, I decided that I wanted to begin with the heart. And there's this great book uh, called The Life of the Beloved. Uh, it's by this great spiritual author, Father Henry Nowen. I'm sure some of you have read him, some of you have known him. Um, he's a really deep, deep author. Uh, he just speaks so deep and profound. But the greatest thing about now and that I love is that he's also very accessible. Um, this book is really a letter, that the book that we're using in the class is really a letter to a Jewish friend of his. So, so I, like, I try to make the, make the connection between Catholic apologetics and the spiritual life and evangelization. And in this book, he spends uh, time trying to teach his friend that the greatest fact or truth about his life, which strikes to the core of every person, is that he, that all of us here, are beloved sons and daughters of God. That the deepest truth about who we are transcends the human experience. That we are beloved sons and daughters of the God who has known us from the very beginning of time. Now you might be saying, okay, Father, I've heard many times in my upbringing and my faith, 
I'm a beloved son of God or that God loves me. But do we really understand what that means? Think about it for a second. Our society today says that we have to be loving and accepting people and that we can't be judgmental. But here's the irony. You turn on the, on the news and you recognize very quickly that we are very judgmental people on both sides. It's really visceral. It's really terrible. But I think it speaks to something so much deeper, my friends. Namely, that in our world, we reduce love. We reduce it to liking what someone does or liking what someone says or liking what someone has or wears or looks like. You get the point. In our world, we, are so, we so often reduce love to likable qualities and others. And is that always bad? No, we're called to like things about other people. But here's the point. If we reduce love so much to what we like about others, then there's a flip side. Namely, that there are things that people don't like about us or things that we don't like about others. And there is the truth. And, but here's the danger. Then we associate the unlikable qualities with love and it hurts us and maybe even destroys us in ways because then we feel unloved and unaccepting of that fact from the very beginning of time, God has loved us. He has loved everything about us. No matter what we do, no matter what we have, no matter what we look like, and when we feel anything other than love by God, then that's from the evil one. It's an absolute lie. Think about our gospel for a second today, my friends. Look at our gospel, this baptism of Jesus in the Jordan River. All of us at our baptisms plunged into that water, plunged into that very human source of life. So this gospel at face value makes no sense. Why would Jesus be baptized in water if he is God? Why would God himself need the human source of life? Even John the Baptist asked that question. But Jesus says, this is how it has to be. And I think it's for this reason Jesus plunges into those same waters as we do, like we did in our baptism, to show us that he is with us, that he will never abandon us, that he gets what we go through in life and how hard that can be, that he understands how we feel. And what happens? How does the story end? He goes down into those waters and comes out, and the heavens were opened, we hear. And he saw the spirit descending and a voice from heaven saying, this is my beloved son. With him, I am well pleased. In other words, in that moment, Jesus teaches us the greatest truth about our lives. That no matter how unloved or unaccepted or alone or afraid we might feel, we are the beloved sons and daughters of God and that we are worth dying for. You know, baptism, in baptism, we go down into the water, or water is poured over our heads, and it symbolizes that we die to sin, that we die to death. It's a symbolism of Christ dying and rising for us on the cross. How Christ made the ultimate sacrifice so that we wouldn't have to. My friends, we are worth dying for. That's what it means to be a beloved son or daughter of the Father. When we accept this most true identity of ourselves, then our lives are changed. We begin to experience love differently. But more importantly, we begin to love others differently. Now and in the book describes the beloved as being taken, blessed, broken, and given. You see the Eucharistic theme there. Jesus taking the bread, blessing the bread, breaking the bread, and giving it. Just as he has given us his very body and blood in Holy Communion. Now and applies this to the life of the beloved. And he has this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful quote in the book that I want to share. 
The blessings that we give to each other are expressions of the blessing that rests on us from all eternity. It's the deepest affirmation of our true self. It is not enough to be chosen. We also need to be an ongoing blessing that allows us to hear in an ever new way that we belong to a loving God who will never leave us alone, but will remind us always that we are guided by love on every step of our lives. We come here before our Lord Jesus Christ, the God of the universe, who is truly present in the blessed sacrament. The same God who plunged into the waters in the Jordan River for our sake and heard those powerful words from heaven. Today, my friends, he speaks those same words to our hearts. You are my beloved. With you, I am well pleased.